Pops Daylight Donuts, man, they've got the best tasting donuts, sausage wraps, pastries in Northeast Oklahoma. And also, if you'll tell the staff there, hey, Scott Townsend said to give me a large spicy pig, they'll give you a free large spicy sausage wrap. But you have to tell them Scott Townsend sent you. So tell them, hey, Scott Townsend told me to tell you to give me a large spicy pig. So there's the offer. There's the, there's the call to action. So go to Pops Daylight Donuts. Say hi to Mark for me. And uh, yeah, go to Pops Daylight Donuts and get you some. The other sponsor is Castafly Outdoor Adventures. Adventure. That's where it begins. We look to create and document our moments in time while embracing the majestic wonder and beauty of the great outdoors. Our quest is to explore the back roads of the Ozarks, camping, fishing, and just getting lost. Refresh your spirit and join us on our next adventure. Paul and his crew invite you to subscribe to the Castafly Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Welcome to the Scott Townsend Show, brought to you by Dietzo Man Productions. Hey, this is Scott Townsend. Thanks for joining the Scott Townsend Show. And today I have with me a special guest, Kate Bratskier from New York. She's a journalist. Um, she's written for Fast Company. Love that magazine. Um, Fox, Inverse, Huffington Post. Um, she writes about food, psychology, travel, uh, dog, cats, <laughs> pets, and Zoom. So, uh, oh, she's written a book. She's an author. She's written the book, The uh, Pocket Guide to Sustainable Food uh, Shopping. Uh, welcome to the show, Kate. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Scott. It's nice to be here. What is Zoom fatigue? What, uh, what is that? Yeah, uh, Zoom fatigue refers to sort of that feeling of exhaustion that comes with communicating over a video conferencing tool. It doesn't have to be Zoom. Um, you know, there are plenty of conferencing tools, whether it's Google Hangouts or Teams, um, but I think the phrase is sort of catchy and Zoom has sort of become this, you know, phrase in the zeitgeist that sort of encom encompasses the, the era that in which we're living. Um, so Zoom really stuck, but I think a lot of people would agree, you know, after Zooming uh, for a couple hours at work, they feel this different kind of, I think, draining um, than, than they're used to, whether it's a phone call um, or through texting or even instant message. So this is just this new kind of exhaustion. So <clears throat> I always thought that uh, video conferencing actually was pretty cool. Um, when I was growing up, you know, the Jetsons, they had the, the phones where you could see each other. And we thought, wow, one of these days we're going to be able to do that, you know. And I think one of those days is now. So, <laughs> um, you know, one of the, you know, when you're on the phone, there's communication. Um, but there's a lot to be said for being able to see someone's body language. Like, here, let me ask Alexa here. Alexa, <laughs> what percentage of uh, Percentages cannot be converted to <laughs> Alexa off. Alexa, what percentage of communication is nonverbal? Here's something I found on the web. According to slideplayer.com, between 65 to 90 percent of messages are nonverbal. When you have the ability to uh, conference call with someone, such as yourself, there's a lot more communication that's going on rather than just the, the verbal. It's the look on the face. It's the, are they smiling, not smiling, you know, um, things like that. Uh, and that's what I appreciate about uh, video conferencing. I think the big problem is, is that people are spending too much time video conferencing. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I think the ability to communicate through video, video is is cool and can be really helpful, but the problem comes when it is the default and like you said, happening too often. Um, we don't, I think body language is really important um, and sort of getting people's vibe, whether that's in person or through the video, but um, mm -hmm. you know, 
when you make that your default way of communicating for every single need you may have, that forces you to, to be conscious of your body language, be conscious mm -hmm. of your surroundings. Um, and that's a lot to have to sort of manage in your mind while also having a conversation with somebody. Um, you know, what has been really clear about this year, this past year is that we don't have control over every aspect in our homes. You know, a lot of people are Zooming with their colleagues while their kids are doing uh, remote school in the background. And, you know, we've seen those like funny news videos where a kid will run into the room and they make for great viral moments. But um, for everyday life, I think that's really distracting. And that is what causes some of the fatigue is sort of like the mental management you have to do to make sure you're in this professional space, even though the professional space is in your home. Right like in a corner of your home. Yeah, it's, right. it's amazing. We got a crash course on so many things last year um, and just, you know, totally shook the bottle and turned it upside down. And people are in their homes now, they're trying to homeschool or, or the dog's barking and, um, and, 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 and they don't have a studio set up in their house. So you've got, you know, no telling what's going on in the background, you know, so. You, in this article in Muse, you wrote uh, eight tips to fight Zoom fatigue. Uh, you listed eight th eight things. One of them, <clears throat> one of them was uh, to stop looking at yourself. One of the right. remedies: stop looking at yourself. How, can you go into that a little bit? Yeah, I think um, I'm not sure if it's true anymore, but when we were first starting to use Zoom a lot, the default was that your face was big on the screen and you know, when that's not a normal way to communicate. That's not what we're used to when we're talking to someone to be looking at ourselves. Um, and that can make us you know, feel very self-conscious. Um, we're picking apart pieces of ourselves that we wouldn't normally, like, how does my mouth look when I talk? Or I, I looked, I made a weird face when I did that. And so that's like another dialogue running through your head as you're trying to communicate something else. Another thing that's distracting and that will in turn lead to fatigue. Um, so experts suggest, you know, just hiding yourself, um, which you can do on most video platforms, um, or even just minimize the video entirely. It's it's kind of weird to to give up, um, you know, to, to just let people see you and and give up having control over that. But it will let you focus better. Um, so I, I think it is a good idea. So I was I was wondering about that, and so I was wanting to do this while we're on this call. You right-click on your image, and then click on Hide Self View. Okay, yeah, I did so it too. I just, yeah, so you're there, but I'm not. Now I don't know how to get back to. Uh, <laughs> uh, show Self View. Okay, there we go. There we go. Um, so yeah, so if you're listening, watching, uh, all you do to hide yourself view is to right click on your image and uh, there will be hide self view. Click on that and, and then you'll go away. So yeah. Uh, the other thing, no, go ahead. Sorry. I'm just going to say like in a, in a regular office setting, you're not always staring in the eye of someone who's giving a presentation. Like mm -hmm. you might be taking notes or um, looking down. It, it's perfectly normal and doesn't mean you're not listening. We just all have these different ways of, of taking in um, communication when it's, when it's audio. So I think there's also this self-consciousness that you think you're being rude if you're not making eye contact. Even you, Scott, mentioned at the beginning of our call, like, don't worry if I look down, I might just be looking at my notes. Right. And, you know, when you're a person to person, you don't really have to explain um, those cues that you might be giving. Uh, so mm -hmm. I think sort of this, this framing of video has made us extra self-conscious in ways that ultimately end up being distracting and tiring. The, uh, the other thing you mentioned too was get your Zooms in early. Um, what did you mean by that? Uh, so the researchers I spoke to said, you know, in the tests that they did, they found that when people had Zooms later in the day, they often experienced more fatigue. Um, of course, it's not possible for everyone to make sure all their Zooms happen first thing in the morning because of different time zones and scheduling and stuff. But that was just one of the findings that, 
you know, if you can get them in early and then spend the rest of your day doing other tasks, that could be helpful in fighting that fatigue. And I believe in that too. That's why uh, for the show, I always try to schedule uh, these interviews at 11 central, you know, get it in before noon, make sure the sun's up, nice light, you know, and all that. But I don't like doing it in the afternoon for sure, because I'm tired or, you know, you've had lunch and the day's <laughs> waning on and I don't know, I'm, I'm totally bought into that. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I didn't even, this is not something like scientifically proven by the, that I spoke to the researchers about, but I think even personally, like if I knew I had to be on camera at five, it's sort of in the back of my mind all day. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true too. Uh, so this sort of lets you show your face and then take off your mask when you're done, you know, you look a little different when, when no one's watching. You also said to use the mute button. Uh, you're on mute. What, uh, how does that help with Zoom fatigue? I think so, you know, you're on mute has sort of become this like catchphrase of 2020, 2021. Everyone always messes up tech wise and that can be frustrating. But the researchers I spoke to said that it's actually better you know, it's what's less frustrating is having to be reminded you're on mute than to have people hear the things happening on happening in your background. You know, a lot of um, ranging from silly to uh, dangerous snafus can happen if people can hear what's going on in your house. Um, a friend recently just texted me and said, I'm so embarrassed. I was just telling my boyfriend all about my healthy breakfast and he wanted to know every ingredient. And someone on the Zoom meeting said, whoever is eating um, an acai bowl, could you please put your, put your uh, computer on mute? And you know, <laughs> that's a funny example, but there's, there definitely can be um, instances where it could you know, sort of be incriminating. Um, oh, but this yeah. way, when you, when you stay on mute, you're, you're keeping background, background noise out and you can actually pay attention to the person speaking rather than um, trying to manage all the distractions that's going on in your house. So, you know, your default is sort of, this will be quiet until I decide otherwise. Don't default to video. Um, you, mentioned, you mentioned don't default to video. So start off with your image, just, just your photograph. Um, and how does that help? That, I think that tip more refers to, you don't have to zoom all the time when, when zooming could be an email. I think um, because Zoom has become such a regular experience um, in all of our lives, sometimes we default to Zoom when, you know, like, hey, could you hop on a video call quickly and talk about this issue we're having, rather than, um, you know, could you have sent that in an email? Could you have done that over the phone? I think it's really easy to just default to one form of communication when we're all trying to sort of settle into this new normal. But um, it can be really distracting, and a lot of people don't like to be surprised with a zoom um you know straighten their hair or fix up their space so they don't look so disorganized um and also it takes more time like when you have a zoom you have to sort of have those formalities of hey how are you doing thanks for jumping on the zoom when in say an email you could just say hey how are you but in typing form this is what i need um mm -hmm. and you know because ultimately our work this especially for work our interactions right now are mostly transactional you know it's like you're communicating with somebody because you need something from them or the other way around and to have to have those transactional interactions over and over again on a video is incredibly tiring mm -hmm. right the formalities right when ultimately you're asking for one thing but you have to sort of put on this act um before you can ask for the thing it's a, it's also just like a waste of time if someone's in the middle of a project and they have to do that with you when you could have just sent a message so I think the, the real takeaway there is that um, you don't always have to communicate over video and you can even sort of mention that you're, you're experimenting with this new, with, with trying out different forms of communication. You can even mm -hmm. tell your colleagues like, hey, I'm trying to limit my Zooms throughout the day. Do you think you could first start off with an email before we, we jump on video? Um, I think people will get the message and it doesn't have to be rude, but uh, it's just something that doesn't work for a lot of people. Meetings, <clears throat> I'm telling you, meetings are so uh, fraught with, we'll talk about that later, but I'm just, uh, 
I really have a uh, pain point when it comes to just meetings um, in general. But moving on, uh, suggest Zoom free days. That's an awesome suggestion. Just like what have this, let's all agree not to Zoom on Friday or something. Yeah, that's exactly what Citibank did recently. Um, I think there was a consensus that people were being exhausted with these video meetings. So they just decided like, get your video meetings done uh, Monday through Thursday and Friday, you won't have to do them. Um, you know, I, I think just knowing that you'll have a day of uninterrupted work can be really uh, freeing. Uh, people can really benefit from sort of being able to reprioritize what they need to do throughout the week if they know I'm not, this is going to be uninterrupted time. Um, and that sort of lets people recover from all of the distractions they've had to deal with jumping on the on the video conferencing tool and then jumping off and jumping back on again. So I, I think it's a really smart idea. Uh, we're just down to a few more items here that you suggested, which are, these are all good suggestions. Um, you said also agree upon some basic etiquette. Could you yeah. kind of talk about that for a second? What kind of etiquette are you talking about here? So if you're Zooming with a, with the same group of people every day, um, you know, I think it's important to come prepared in whatever way you agree upon. So, I, you know, I, because I'm a freelance writer, I Zoom with all different people uh, throughout the week because I don't I don't have just one company I work for. And, you know, some sometimes people will be on video, sometimes they won't be. And I sort of never know what I'm going to get and can be a little anxiety inducing to like have my face broadcasted on people's screens without being able to see them, too. So I think um, if you do work at a company that that zooms a lot, it'd be really helpful to sort of you could even put in the count in the zoom invite like, hey, this is a cameras off meeting or or this is a cameras on meeting. It's important that we all show each other's uh, faces today. But just sort of having an expectation before you attend that Zoom can really help you mentally prepare and thus be less exhausted. Um, you know, when you're all on the same page, you can communicate more easily. And then all the tech hiccups of like, oh, let me get my camera on or um, sorry, my, my camera's broken. Like th those kinds of things can be sort of, um, remedied before your your meeting even begins you're freezing up you're freezing up you know right you know, that kind of thing <laughs> i did that the other day actually i had a meeting with uh, two other folks uh we had to jump I, I just had to quickly clear something up on a saturday morning i said no cameras i'm not turning mine on you know <laughs> this is saturday morning it just it's just going to take five minutes uh this is camera free camera off yeah i think you know, when I, when I am setting up interviews with people, um, I will say, I will first offer my phone number um, because my goal is to have as few Zoom meetings as possible. Um, so I think, you know, this is a little bit different of a tip, but getting in front of preventing Zooms when you don't want them or camera-free Zooms and what you did, I think was so great because then no one has to worry about, you know, their physical presentation. Um, I think that can really be helpful especially on a Saturday morning or something <laughs> like that, you know, when you're just, yeah, just lounging around the house or, or Absolutely. should be. Uh, another thing you mentioned was to uh, take a break and move around. I, I can see that one right there. That, that's a good tip. So how do you do that if you're on a Zoom? Yeah, it's tough because when we used to meet in person, there were breaks and movement built into meetings. You know, everyone goes to a conference room, you shuffle around, find a seat, but now that's not possible. Um, so I think people who are on their computers all day, whether you're Zooming or not, it's really important to build in breaks throughout your day. Um, for some people that might be walking your dog, so it's sort of built in for you, but others, it might be really important to actually physically schedule those into your calendar. Um, just having a reminder to get up can be incredibly helpful. Um, you know, your body will get fatigued if you don't move it around and it really benefits not just you know feeling exhausted, but can make you actually more productive um, when you take breaks during the day. There's plenty of research that has found that. So mm -hmm. it's I think it's tough for people to prioritize because you know it in our rational minds that it, that doesn't always make sense to take a break to do work better, uh, but it is the mm -hmm. case. And I believe that, but I get so I get so in the zone when I'm doing something like I'll be editing this interview. Mm -hmm. uh, next today and next week 
and I'll, I'll get, I mean, I love editing and uh, I'll, I'll get into it. And before I know it, three hours have gone by. It's, I started at eight, now it's noon. Wow. I'm all stiff, you know, when I get up. I need to build on some time to walk away and just, you know, stretch and move around. That's my problem. I get so, you know, I call it getting in the zone, you know, and then you look up and, oh my gosh, where'd the time go? Yeah, those and getting in the zone is such a great feeling. I, you know, I so, sort of cherish those feelings because, you know, you're really in the zone and you're getting work done. But I think the moment, the best moments to stand up are when you sort of click out of those zones for a moment and you're just like, I'm confused. I feel a little overwhelmed or I don't know where to go next. That's a great time to stand up and get going. Mm -hmm. Ernest Hemingway said something like uh, when, when you're writing and it starts really getting good, that's a good time to take a break because <laughs> then, because then you'll be so excited to get back and, and continue that storyline or whatever, you know, it yeah. kind of jump starts the next writing session. That makes sense rather than, you know, leaving off in a bad place where, you know, when you come back, you are just going to have a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The final uh, min uh, suggestion you wrote here in your article in Muse, the Muse was uh, to find ways to foster connection with your coworkers. Yeah. What so I kind of, touched up, I touched upon this a little bit earlier in our conversation, but you know, um, a lot of the interactions we have with our colleagues right now are purely transactional because we're not having like, water cooler talk uh we're not like physically sharing a space where you have to interact with people whether it's like you're grabbing the same coffee mug or what are you eating for lunch and sort of those those what we think are mundane interactions really do add up and mm -hmm. that's what makes you enjoy your coworkers as people and and you know want to force or want to form relationships with them um i think it's especially difficult to foster these kinds of relationships through video connection. I know a lot of companies are working on making this better. Uh, companies will have happy hours or, you know, um, get to know each other games, uh, ice, icebreaker questions. Personally, I haven't, mm -hmm. I don't think that there is um, a fix to this just yet. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's just getting to know your coworkers on an individual level that will really help you feel more connected. You know, one of the researchers I spoke to said, you don't have that sort of, you know, when someone, you have like a work wife and some, your boss says something stupid and you sort of like exchange a little glance with your work wife, like those interactions mean so much um, and are, are tough to mimic virtually. So I think it's however you can connect on a personal level with your uh, colleagues, do it. It doesn't have to be through Zoom, uh, but, put in the extra effort to get to know them and and relate over things that don't have to do with work if possible. So when you do, when you are zooming, you can feel sort of better seeing this not stranger on the computer. It just seems to me uh, and great article, by the way, and that's when I read it. Um, and I'm sure if you're like me, sometimes you wonder who reads your stuff, you know, and where, where are they? And so I did. And I really enjoyed it. And I was like, and I'm on this meeting kick thing right now. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to do a series on meetings. I'm trying to get this author also. Uh, meetings suck, uh, Cameron mm. and Carol. Um, sure do. <laughs> but uh, it seems to me, <clears throat> see what you think. I, I, the last company I worked for, we would have meetings and then we would have meetings about the meetings. And we would just we would meet. If anybody had a question, we'll call a meeting. And it's it's a knee jerk reaction that costs so much time and it costs mm -hmm. so much money when you figure out how much per hour people represent when they come into the meeting, especially an all employee meeting. And uh, I've never seen anybody teach or, or say, okay, so here's how we're going to do meetings here. Yeah. But they expect you to have meetings, and so you have all these people abusing. Uh, they don't even, they don't even know they're abusing the, the people right. and the time and the, um, how to conduct a meeting, how to help people get the most out of a meeting. Do I even need to be in this meeting? You know, right. and I think it's all up to the facilitator. I, 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 and so that's why I'm going to, it's such a pain point 
that's why uh, there's going to be a series of podcasts here about meetings and, and Zoom, you know, so I appreciate you kind of kicking this off. Most people would agree with you. Meetings can be really exhausting and distracting. And, you know, I'm no expert, but I, I do think most companies would benefit from having, I imagine there are like super meeting facilitators who know exactly how to host the best meeting. And if, unfortunately, if um, those, if a corporation would put it, would invest in those people to host a meeting, to teach people how to have good meetings, I think that could go a long way. Um, you know, what I have seen in my own career is that, you know, the, the higher up you go, the more meetings you have and like the less work you're doing. And, and that never really made sense <laughs> to me. Um, so yeah, I think everyone could benefit from learning how to host an efficient meeting. And that's one of the purposes of this podcast, VidCast, is to, for my listeners and those who watch on YouTube, to, you know, I always hope someone gets to learn something. You know, they, they, they walk away having, feeling like they've learned something where it's going to help them in their business or in their personal life, whatever. This is, for all of you watching and listening, this is a huge opportunity for you to learn about Zoom, how to use Zoom, uh, go back to your company and say, we need a Zoom, tra we need Zoom training, or we need video conference training. The other thing too is, you know, we're all remote. That goes without saying pretty much anymore. So we, we, you need Zoom or you need video conferencing, but do they all need to be videos and do they, or do they all need to be phone calls or, uh, you know, it, it can't be all one thing. It's, you know what I mean? That's just, you know what I'm yeah, saying? I think that's sort of like establishing the etiquette and the boundaries, um, that you're going to use to to rely on these tools. I think that's true with any tool that a that in a work environment um, wants to use. It's really important to create sort of a best practices guide, um, and it doesn't have to be complicated, but just sort of just like some rules of thumb or yeah, best practices, so people can feel they're most comfortable and know that they're not also not wasting other people's time. And and you know, it, it feels like making that investment. I think sometimes can be hard to do because you feel like you're wasting time by focusing on something that isn't directly tied to um, a goal or project, but ultimately it saves time in the long run. It's just, you know, it takes a bigger picture approach to realize that. Mm -hmm. Saves time and money. Yeah. And resources. Well, Kate, I yeah. uh, really appreciate your time on being on the show today and uh, lending your uh, expertise on this zoom fatigue i know a lot of people have experienced it this especially this last year as we all get used to a new way of working um i'm going to post the uh article in the show notes uh, below so that the, uh those of you listening or watching can go and read that and i highly suggest you do and read her other articles too i'll post your website if someone wants to get in touch with you what's the best way to reach out um, I have a contact, uh, whole contact form on my website. It has my email, Twitter, everything. I will get back to you. Um, and yeah, so I think that's the best way. Cool. I'll put that down in here as well. Well, Kate, I really appreciate it. It's been informative. Uh, I've learned a lot and I really appreciate you coming on and sharing with us. Thank you so much for having me. This is actually a Zoom I have found not to be exhausting. So it's been a real treat. Thank you for having me. <laughs> So for Kate Bratskier, this is Scott Townsend. Thanks for joining the Scott Townsend Show. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. Scott Townsend Show is a Deedso Man production. For more episodes, visit the Scott Townsend Show YouTube channel, listen on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Scott.